Hello and welcome to Board Stupid. My name's Wayne. And I'm Matt. And this is the continuation of... The Spieltacular Week. Spieltacular <laughs> September. <laughs> Spieltacular Month, Matt. Yeah, it is it's, a month. It's not a week. It's, it's not a week. It's like, a whole oh my month. God. Oh my we are, God. I know, there is so much content that we need to bring to you about this amazing event, the biggest board game event of the year. And it's so big, some things just get lost in the shuffle. Yes. So you will hear a lot of like the big names. The We've big already done some publisher. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best game to buy. Their wow. best game to demo. Oh, their, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the most anticipated oh, stuff. Yeah, You're going to yeah, see yeah, a, lot, a lot of content. Uh, but this one in particular is about the top 10 games from indie publisher Small or box games. smaller box or something that could be Unusual. lost in the Thousands chaos of, of, uh, of, of, um, of Spiel. So yeah, it is our top 10 of hidden gems that you can find at Spiel. Absolutely. So we've got some interesting stuff there. And do you know what's not hidden? The subscribe button is right there. So you, if you just you, click, you it. click it, yeah, just click it. It's, yeah, I, can, I can see it. Yeah, it's it's gonna so you can see it. Click it. Yeah. And then Let's dig into this episode and, and find some hidden gems. Hidden shall we? gems, yes. Let's go find them. Rolling dice, feeling nice. Got more dreams and game schemes. Click subscribe, it's a vibe. Poor stupid's all we need. Poor stupid, poor stupid. Game reviews for you and me. Poor stupid, poor stupid. Here's what you should play and see. So Matt, let's dig into the pile yes, of games. What yes. have you got for us? Um, so we start. So the the next ten games are not in any particular order. Are just like the one that we we like, we, we like, like to talk about it. Yeah. And the first one that I would really like to talk about it is Donkey Shot. Yes. Are you saying English again? I couldn't even try to then, because and the reason why I'm not going to say it because <laughs> I'll get in trouble in the comments. So I'm not even going to bother Matt. I'll let you take the heat for the Don't Italian part. Well, no, Don Quixote is definitely is, that right? is definitely the correct one because it's from uh, an Italian designer, an Italian publisher. Oh, okay. We're talking about Lamasca Lamascape Games, and is Andrea the same guys that he put in together Bermot that yes. we already covered a few times, and we will do again in the future. Um, while Bermot. It, being a bear mod of a game, it's, it's rolling and getting ready. Um, it came out with this other little card game uh, that is Donkey Shot and is based about the Donkey Shot, the, the, the novel. Uh, so if you haven't read it, you should, because it's a classic. Possibly uh, <laughs> that is the first novel, I guess, uh, yeah. about the madness yeah. of the Don on his travels and all of his different adventures. Exactly. Um, and it is a small card-based game that utilizes an interesting voting system. Mm -hmm. Really uh, interesting for such a for a game that game. scale. Yeah, yeah, very small game. Um, and I like, I say like, I love voting in games. Yeah. Voting is cool. <laughs> yeah. Voting mechanisms are cool. Yeah. And it has some cool powers as well that you can get, which will change the different uh, the yeah. values of the votes and other stuff that's going on. All the while trying to encourage one of the various traits yes. uh, towards various, either being the highest or lowest on this track. Right? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, like around the table, how uh, sometimes you can make enemies or friends depending on what events you're trying to vote for, if you want a deck to pass or not to pass. It's really, really interesting. We did play a prototype that yeah. you're probably seeing in the, on the screen right now. Yeah. Um, it's a very early stage prototype, so HBO now the It'll game the should, be, should be the final version. In quite a lovely looking production. Actually. Absolutely, it looks really, really good. And uh, yeah, we definitely encourage you to go and find it out. Go check it. Don't shot. He said it. Okay, Win. I guess we go from one little card games to another one, right? Yeah, we've got a card slash tile based game called Vampire Knights. Uh, and Ooh, this doesn't love a vampire. Oh, everyone loves vampires. <laughs> they're always in fashion. Right? Yes, they're like always the, never out of fashion. Absolutely. Yeah, like the interview with the vampire back in the nineties, or you got the Twilight vampires from like oh, God, that stuff. <laughs> Anyway, um, this is a really interesting game where uh, you are exploring a uh, old mansion, mm -hmm. as you might imagine, represented by sort of partly uh, covered tiles okay. on the board. 
And each player is going to have two guards that are going to be wandering around the mansion, uncovering the tiles, uncovering different information. But there may be because uh, you're gonna be looking for treasure. But there may be times where you'll uncover a vampire. Okay. A vampire bite. And if you take too many bites, well, guess what? You're gonna be turning into a vampire, and unbeknownst oh. to the rest of the players, your role then changes, and you're gonna have a different win condition for the end of the game. That, that, sounds, sounds, that sounds really fun. That, that sounds, sounds really fun, fun, right? It sounds like um, it, on, on the lighter side again. Yeah. But it sounds really fun and with this like it's small hidden roll yeah, thing as well. Yeah, a little bit well. of hidden information, hidden um, rolls. Yeah, it, it, it sounds really, sounds really cool. nice. The graphics and the, all the artwork's really absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sounds something that, yeah, could be on your table because it sounds absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so definitely go check out Vampire Nights. So Matt, hidden gems aren't always around the smaller form factor. No, they could be slightly bigger and they could have miniature, for example. <laughs> when it's you, of course it's got miniature. So tell, tell us about this one. This no, one? no, no. Uh, so we are talking about Under Our Sun yeah. from the guys at Table Topper Games. This is, I believe, their very first production. Could be a so release for this designer as well, right? Indie, indie. So uh, we love it. Jets is uh, people that do this stuff with the Passion, love and this yeah. is normally the very um, the designer very first game is the one that they all been thinking about it for all their lives yeah, so it, right. it's, it, it's it's great to see thing. these people bring in their games on the table it, it must be like a, a fantastic feeling about it but going back to the game so under our sun uh, set up in um, um, in a future where everything has died and there is wasteland post apocalyptic and, uh, you know the, the, the post apocalyptic Mad Maxi style the, the look it doesn't look a copy of Mad Max for right. for for for, clair for clarity like more of a um, survival yeah wasteland. exactly and and it's it's a co it's a Semi corporate game. So basically, you are one of one survivor. Each each player will have uh, an asymmetric character. So some can do this or that. Some one others will do different things. And you're basically exploring the wasteland in this modular hexagonal uh, map, map. So it will change every time you play. And uh, you're trying to to do your mission, gather resources, and all that kind of stuff. And it's semi cop because a in the wasteland, possibly really the wasteland, if you need to cross someone, even if it's your friend, probably you will have to do it. You might have to drop it. <laughs> drop an m, &M right? But um, overall, you're getting the, getting the stuff for you, crafting materials, you're crafting weapons, and you're basically trying to survive in this uh, very, very bad world that is out there. Um, again, it looks really, really good. It cool sounds really well. interesting. Yeah. It's got to me a little bit of a vibe of um, something like that of winter, uh, where you kind of like collab until until you're not, and you going out in uh, and trying to find resources cool. and all stuff. So um, it gave me gave me that 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 little feeling um, of a game that I really love, and it went a little bit out of fashion. I don't know why, because that winter is absolutely a magnificent game. game. And uh, yeah, the best really. Game. really <laughs> Still the best prospects, but yes, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to have a look at this one, and you yeah. should do as well because it looks fantastic. Really so cool. uh, go out and find it out under our sun. Okay, um, wait for the next one. Uh, you got something you haven't, you didn't want to tell me which one is, so go on. I'd like to surprise you. Sometimes. Go on, surprise me. So I know that we always talk about having amazing themes. Yes, what about this? What's this? Car parks. <laughs> okay. okay. Wait, wait. For a quirky team, I'm all out there. Uh, that, yeah, let's tell me more. So tell this is more. overparked. Okay. I through the digging of thousands of games, as I keep saying, we did yeah. hours of research for this content. Uh, I found this quirky little amazing looking game called Overparked, where it's a puzzle focused tile okay. placement. Okay. Tile placement, token placement. Game, yeah, 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 yeah. Where you are, I suppose a Imagine you are the a traffic or, marshal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the organizer of a big event, okay. and you know that there's tons of traffic. You need to mm -hmm. sort of organize that. It's kind of that, okay. uh, and you have a couple of interesting things. There is a card drafting mechanism, mm -hmm. which is cool. So you've got this like little steering wheel piece that you will turn, and that will determine 
which card each player drafts. So when you're the person who gets to choose the steering wheel, you go, I want this one. Okay. And also determine which one oh, everyone which else one the other gets. one. Interesting. So that's yes. cool as well. Yeah, 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 so you yeah. might not be actually, I don't want this one, but if I do this one, everyone else gets these oh, terrible okay. cards. Okay. Because I know that's going to be bad. Nice, for nice. The cards. Those cards will go into your hand. And you need to play one of those cards, which will tell you which pieces have to go in your car park. And there might be lorries, which take up loads oh, of space, or it might nice. be little cars, yeah, yeah, or it could yeah, be yeah, just yeah, motorbikes, yeah. or whatever it is. So you might say, deliberately take a car that isn't ideal for you, but it forces other people to put like massive trucks in okay, their parking lot. So that kind of stuff really well has this really cool puzzly vibe. There's also like public objectives to score depending okay. on you know, if you can get a certain amount of different types of vehicle in a certain space or in different locations in your parking nice. lot. Nice. It's, it's cool. It sounds like, it sounds okay. like, yeah, so it's got, so it's really this quirky. like polyomino. Yeah, polyomino on, on, with on tokens. The, on, of, like, yeah, it's really little, interesting. Yeah, really, really interesting, cool. Yeah. And cool like quirky art design really as well. nice, yeah. Um, um, I think this might be pretty special. Yeah, so let's go have a look at Yeah, we're going to check that out. Overparked. Overparked. So Matt, I know you're going to really struggle to beat such a cool theme like car parking, but I know it's in you. So what have you got for me? And I'm talking about tarots. Tarot. Ooh, yeah. those yeah. fancy story, uh, future-telling okay. cards. And uh, I'm talking about the game is called Sibyl from the guys at Marathon Games, again first game, first game Thank produced, but, and it looks, let me talk about artwork wise, it looks absolutely stunning, uh, uh, the, uh. it looks it looks incredible, is it because uh, they are Italian? Maybe, I'm just not saying, maybe, maybe. that's why it looks so beautiful, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> apart, from, apart from that, um, in Sibyl, um, basically, um, uh, you work as a, as a, a fortune teller, okay. Um, and you are basically uh, trying to get the favors of, of two gods. Now, um, each game, uh, there's going to be four random gods that they are, they are uh, mixed at the start of the game, and those get, those four gods will give the um, uh, end of game conditions. Okay, mm -hmm. so every time you play, you already got re a lot of replayability, and put it there on the side. The next one is going to be the um, your game is going to be a hand management of your of your tarots of your cards. Um, well, during your turn, you're gonna play three cards. That's gonna do. That's gonna let you do different abilities. For example, gathering resources mm -hmm. or playing all the all the cards and blah blah blah. The, the, a little bit of um, uh, engine building mm -hmm. there. Then you play another three cards where you're trying to predict what the other game, the other players are gonna play. Mm -hmm. And if you got it, you can play that card as well. Nice. So you got a little bit of the set, like trying to understand what the Odyssey is gonna is gonna do, and uh, basically you're trying to build your fame and uh, trying yeah. to build your points to um, to win the game. It sounds absolutely that was wonderful. And the artwork, interesting, is awesome. By the way, the um, production is great. And you do this, like yeah, they say that most of the game experience is about the predicting, predictive binding combos, chains of action, and interaction with the with love the other it. cards. The bidding, so, and deduction. I love that. That game, sounds uh, really sounds cool. absolutely absolutely up our street and yeah. uh, again this is an absolutely first timer for yeah. for for this uh, for these guys and it looks absolutely stunning so seed bill went straight up on this list okay Wayne, what do you got next for the next one i've found another quirky selection mm -hmm. uh, something interesting and uh, doing something very different okay um, and this is again a first time release uh, a, a debut game um, by Mr. Gerardo Maria Priore, uh, and it is The Strange Forgeries of Mr. S.C. Horeba. All right, that's a mouthful, it's a mouthful title, but, but yes. Also, <laughs> amazing artwork on this game, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, it looks uh, great. It looks cool as hell. So this is a game of induction. Okay. Uh, for up to six players, and apparently um, is so not, not deduction, not deduction, induction, induction okay. logic, inductive reasoning. Okay, interesting. And apparently, is one of only a handful of games that do inductive okay. logic, inductive reasoning as a game mechanism or design uh, principle. Explain me. I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> but it sounds amazing. So, like, and I think I get it based on the description of the mm -hmm. game. So I'm going to read it out. Okay, go on. It's like, it, unlike I suppose a social deduction game where there is one person that's doing something wrong it's yeah. not really that i think there is one person that is deciding a rule and everyone else has to try and work out what, that what rule the rule is, is. In okay some way. okay yeah so everyone is a collector except one player who is a gallerist 
and it goes like this. The gallerist invents a secret rule and it's the collector's objective to guess it. During the game, the collectors are going to produce many drawings and then the gallerist will secretly tell them whether the drawing follows the secret rule or not, otherwise known as if the drawings are originals or if they're fakes. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the game, the collectors will try and put their collective knowledge to the test and try to guess whether their opponents' displayed drawings follow the rule or not. Mm -hmm. Mistakes determine the winner. So they want to try and make as few mistakes as possible. Oh, okay. So you're going to say, that one follows the rule, that one's one an original, not. that one's a fake. And oh, then I'll okay. have a score. And then everyone will do that. Okay, perfect. So you as a person trying to work out through so, reasoning. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It sounds, what is the rule? Sounds interesting. Sounds very quirky, especially yeah. yeah, the production with this drawing element as yeah. well. I'm usually not a big fan, but this one sounds like it's completely t taking that things and transforming it into something completely different. Yeah, because you don't um, have to be an amazing artist, you yeah, could just be yeah, shaped. Yeah, 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 right? exactly, or, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that sounds really interesting. It sound, sounds definitely different from yeah. a lot of other things, and this is what we like this hobby, because they're like, there's always some people innovating. Everyone else. So this is yeah. doing something very different, looks fun, looks interesting, um, looks like a great uh, sort of deductive logic yeah. game. Um, and I'm super into that, so I can't wait to go and check Say the out. title again, because there was a lot. The Strange Forgeries of Mr. S. C. Reber. Whatever you say. <laughs> Matt, what's next? Uh, next one, I got a small card game from a big publisher this time, but um, it's, uh, it's a game front by Cosmos. All are welcome um, here in the Hidden Gems. Yeah, but um, uh, it's a very small box game, card game, that could be lost in the other thousand games that they got out there. And it uh, sounds really fun, and it's called The Game. Uh, it's basically a twist on uh, the Texas Hold'em poker. 40,500,000 all in. Cool. So if you like if you like Texas Old and Park, I used to play a ton fun. of that. That sounds really yeah. good. This is a more of a of, on a fun, lighter yeah. way. So basically, at the start of your of your turn, each player will will get a chip. Um, and uh, trying to predict how good he's gonna do, his hand is gonna do against the other people on the around the table. So there's no money involved. There is these things they say good or bad, but okay. doesn't mean that if, if you say you're gonna do worse than everybody, you're still getting your points at the end. So you still got that thing. And um, and then it works like a round of Texas Hold'em uh, when the cards are gonna go down on the river. If yeah, I believe yeah. they, so you they got the flop, the river, and the at, at the end, who, who wins the point? or who wins whatever is predicted, yeah. um, he gets the point. Now, the point is uh, that you got to open a vault of the casino. So that's why it's called the gang, because ah, you represent this gang. Um, the game will end as soon as one of the players will uh, manage to open the three vaults. However, that's the other twist. If you predict it wrong, you're going to trip the alarm of the vault. And as soon as you got three alarms both on, you're out of the game. I see. Okay, so cool. it's, it's very much a twist on the um, the Texas Oldham in a in a board game way. So not it's that. not it's that not cool as hell. just a it's just like a card a game. Short and short and sweet. Yeah, exactly. Like bam, 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 bam. You, you deal game. the cards. You know, what you think, but good or bad, and yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's very fun. That sounds great. The production looks really really That's good. Cool as hell. And at the end of the day, it is there are poker cards, but with a very nice nice twist. A nice theme, a nice um, twist on. on so on, on small hold. game, big publisher. But it could be lost in under all the thousand games that they got on their stand. Oh, so it sounds great. I've never heard of it. Keep an eye on the game. Let's go. Okay, Wayne, uh, let's go. Let's go because this one we both loved it when we saw it the first time, and finally we could play, actually yeah. touch oh, it and play, play, it. play it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's been a uh, death, a tragic, tragic yeah. day. Uh, a dictator has gone and it has left. A power vacuum. Yes. And that is the name of this next power game. Power vacuum. And it's a double entendre, of course, Matt, because you are also sentient appliances. <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally about you talking about a, a, a vac sentient vacuum. A vacuum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, essentially you're going to be doing trick-taking. Mm -hmm. And I've got a thing for trick-taking recently, I think. Uh, uh, there was a 
uh, a big boom of trick taking a few years ago, but it's still kind of seeing the yeah. tail end of it and still being innovative in that space. Uh, and it has some treacherous twists to it as well. So you're going to be using tricks to adjust the power levels of the other players to work towards your hidden agendas, because you have hidden agendas mm -hmm. as well. Um, you want to be ideally also uh, creating a statue to your own glory yes. in the game as well, which is really great. Um, and it also has this, this ridiculous, hilarious theme with wonderful artwork. Uh, and I mean, it's completely balmy. Let's be honest. It is. I mean, it it's is. Apps, it's, it looks fun as hell. Uh, and if anything, uh, board shooters is about. It's about having fun having playing fun, games. Absolutely. Uh, this, this, this is, is great fun. fun. Yes. So yeah, tremendous stuff. I mean, it's not necessarily about winning every trick. So mm -hmm. there's the twist to the game. It's a trick taker where you don't necessarily want to win the trick. You might want to lose the tricks uh, or choosing the right cards at the right time to engineer the, the rise or fall of your opponents, depending on mm -hmm. what your agendas say, uh, so you can then profit in the long term. Um, each card suit, and here's another twist of the game, is actually visible on the back. Of yeah, the card, so oh you yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Suit, but not necessarily the value, which is quite interesting. So you can focus on But then you've got some, the, some of this that actually tells you that it's one suit, but it's actually some spies. Yeah, the spy yeah, spy cards as you, well. you can have a card that say, I got this suit, but it's actually on the other side is something different. So, so there's, yeah, uh, some there's some a lot of stuff fun in there. Yeah. There's some yeah, like, yeah. really fun, interactive trick taker with a theme that is completely off the wall and really great, interesting artwork. Fun as heck. Uh, that's Power Vacuum. Uh, we love it. Yeah. Okay, Matt, what's next? Well, I could not not finish with a dungeon crawler. Of course, it wouldn't be you. If no, you didn't it would not be crawler. me. But this is a very particular one. Okay. Because this is based on a metal band. So, metal heads around there, listen to Let's me. Go. This game is called From the Other Side. Okay. Uh, it's produced by Scribabs. Scribabs. Uh, they've done something similar in the past um, with another band, but this From the Other Side is the official game, official dungeon crawler for the Blind Guardian. So if you're a fan of the Blind Guardian, this is their story in a board game. It's a story of fantasy dungeon crawling, yeah. but you basically um, the the guys have been trapped into this from on the other side of the of the mirror that they need to try to gather pieces around to put them back together to summon the Blind Guardian that's gonna save the world again. It doesn't finish here because the actual um, designer of the one of the actual designer of the game is Frederick Hemke, that is actually the drummer of Blind Guardian. So he's getting even more in more in, and uh, it's it's a classic dungeon crawler with with a very very inspired by their music and their um, um, their lyrics and stuff. So Ethos, if you're yeah. if you're a fan, this is definitely for you. And if you are a spiel on the Friday afternoon, the band is going to be there to sign the copies. Love that. So um, this is, I don't know, more niche than this. I don't know what you think. More gem, niche more guess, gem right? than this. More gem than this. I don't know holy, what, what holy to tell you guys. It's a very, very serious dungeon crawler with the Blind Guardian team, with the Blind Guardian designer. Um, there is, it. yeah, absolutely. Uh, dragons. Orcs, warriors, you, oh, you name it. It's a proper dungeon crawler, a proper metal dungeon crawler. <laughs> let's go. Perfect. We are basically at the end. We're at the uh, end. Yeah, what were well, you got for the, your for the last one on this list? Well, as always, Matt, I think it's your influence on me. Yeah, go I, on. I always seem to be ending with an Italian <laughs> It sounds like, it's yes. A, yeah, I don't know what it is, mate. I spend you too long with you. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> this is Cosca. Take over Ooh. the mafia. Okay, this interesting. Is, yeah, very interesting. This is by a publisher called Talama Games, mm -hmm. uh, by Vashek uh, Lofek, and I'm pretty sure this is a Czech publisher. Okay. So, uh, Dobry Den, uh, Moje Czeski Leader. Whatever you uh, say. I, yeah, I will see you uh, in Spiel. Yep. Uh, and this seems really fun. It is. It plays in under an hour, uh, three to five players, and it has this kind of 
um, blind bidding or uh, sort of sh uh, shielded mm -hmm. bidding slash auction system, which I love, love that in games. Yeah. So that's super cool. Uh, and it is a kind of party esque, heavier than party. So, yeah. Like, Party game for board games. It's a, it's a party game for board games. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. As we call it, uh, using secret bids which have dice. You've got a screen and you've got these dice with different symbols, and you're going to be setting those dice in secret behind your screen. Mm -hmm. And the dice actually um, will uh, refer to various cards that you laid out. Okay. Below. And what you're doing is you're bidding on those cards. Mm -hmm. Those cards are the various mafiosos uh, in the mob, and if you can get certain symbols to match the cards, you're going to take that card into your mob which is great. However, the more maf mafia mafiosos that you have, the harder it is to con keep control of them. Okay. Right? And so some might actually be outbid uh, uh, if someone bids more dice for them, etc. over the course of the game. So it seems super interesting, um, not particularly heavy, but I love sort of betting, bluffing, auction bidding, especially with secret bids uh, and kind of a set collection system as well. Um, and I like the idea of uh, the folks that you bid for not necessarily staying with you. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Could, they could start around. going around, yeah. This is really, really fun. So, um, yeah, I like the idea of this one. It has a cool looking production, um, cool theme. Uh, I, I like the vibe of it, man. So it looks, looks great. And who doesn't like Mafia? Except maybe the people that imp yeah. impacted by the Mafia. Yeah. But in the fantasy world. In the fantasy cool world, as hell. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell, let's go to the outro. Matt. Just a drop in the ocean of all yeah, the it amazing is. games. It is. And I, I'm really sorry for all the other ones that we left out, but otherwise we'll make a list um, of, a, of a thousand. The short list for um, this was like 50 games long. Yeah, it's, it's just like, it's, um, it's, it's so hard. Every time that spiels arise, it's always like a fight on which games are we talking about and which one not. It's, it's always so difficult. It's so, so much work. Um, and, uh, yeah. Again, there's going to be more and more and more. And uh, if you're going to follow us for the uh, during Spiel and Pop Spiel, we'll try to bring as many other games as we can. But that's what we're trying to do all the time. Absolutely, because this is the hidden gems that we know of. But the thing There's that we found... There's so many that we're yeah, going to find there. Yeah. The really, really hidden stuff yeah. we won't even know until we get there. Yeah. And we'll make sure to tell you about anything exciting while we're there. But of course, if you want to know about that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It's so. the only way. Yeah, it is. It is the only way. So <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> and also, let us know in the comments below what you think of this list of 10 yep. games. Uh, which one are you most excited about? Yeah, Have yeah, any yeah. of them piqued your interest? Would you be keen to check out any of these games? We've got everything here from dungeon crawlers to work placement games to everything from puzzle and car parking to induction logic to everything you yeah, can Yeah, there imagine. is a little bit for everyone. And it's and, the yeah, and we encourage you guys, if you dare a spiel, go to the to these indie publishers and go say hi and just like shake their hands and, uh, and make the friends because they are always very happy to explain their, their games. So absolutely. it's absolutely lovely. So do that, check out the rest of our content, hit the like button, and we'll catch you again real soon. Ciao! Possibly, possibly, here's what you should play and see.